Hello and welcome. Got a fun one for you today. I'm going to be doing a um, an old model off problem from 2019, the last year of model off, based on solving crosswords. So what are we going to be talking about? A couple of topics. One is just a general thing about text functions and wildcards. Obviously, pretty relevant for trying to solve crosswords in Excel. I feel like this one's worth talking about because it's uh, it's like an astonishing gap in many really really qualified financial modelers uh, toolkits in my in my view like I've seen people who are just you know world beaters and wizards at financial modeling who don't know how to use wildcards in uh, in various functions um, I, I don't know why but it seems to be underappreciated in the world so I'm going to talk more about it um, and then the, the interesting thing for me is I wrote this question three years ago uh, and as I was planning to make this video, I went to look back on uh, on how I had solved it before. And it was like kind of going back to the dark ages because there's so many things that have much more uh, much more elegant approaches now. Um, so I'm going to show you some of that. And in particular, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, a way to do a formula filter using wildcards. Um, so, you know, you, now with... Uh, with dynamic arrays, you can filter an array of cells using a formula. Uh, so, you know, filter only for the ones where this column is the word Bob or whatever. But there's no uh, obvious native way to say, you know, filter for all the ones where, you know, it starts with B and contains QRF and ends with Z or something like that. Um, but there is a, you know, a not too tricky workaround to do that. And then the last one, uh, you know, partially just for fun, uh, you know, back to my computer science background, um, but also because it's actually relevant to the problem, I'm going to be showing you how to do a recursive lambda, which means a, a lambda function that calls itself. Uh, first time I wrote one of those, so uh, that's another, another interesting, you know, modern Excel topic. So let's dive quickly into the question. Uh, you're given a data set uh, of 10,000 or so words, um, I did this two reasons. One, because, you know, working with a real English dictionary, you've probably got like 250,000 words in like a Scrabble dictionary or something like that. And it's just, you know, it becomes a little bit too much about um, about runtime and efficiency and all that. So I just went for a shorter list. But the second reason is because, you know, this was for a competition and, uh, you know, there are lots of crossword solvers out there in the world. Uh, so I didn't want people to be able to just, you know, go and work out the answer without doing any Excel themselves. So what are the questions? Uh, you've got some simple ones to start. How many five-letter words are in the list? Uh, how many words start with JB? How many words start with HF and so on? How many words match each of these patterns? And this is this is kind of very much the real world motivation. You know, if I've got uh, various different crosses, then how many words could I find from the dictionary that, uh, that could be, you know, possible next ones. Um, then this one is a slightly more excel -y version of that, which is, you know, find the third word in alphabetical order matching each of these patterns. Uh, then we've got a couple of ones with, you know, a fuller grid. So we've got two words in the grid. And in this case, there's only one other pair of words that can complete the grid. You have to find it. And in this case, there are multiple possibilities and you just have to figure out how many of them there are. And then the last couple of questions are to do with anagrams. Uh, and then there's a few bonus questions after that, which I'll talk about at the end. Uh, those are harder and I'm not going to do them today, but you might enjoy them. So let's start off with some of the easier ones. How many five-letter words are there in the word list? Well, one of the easier ways to do this is just to add a column for length, which is just L-E-N. Uh, fill that down, and then you can either filter here for five, uh, and I'll just move up for a second so you can see, do, 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 do. there we go, so you can see there's 449 words that match, uh, I'll scroll that back down so you can see a little bit more on the screen, so the answer is 449, or if you want to be more formula-ish, then you can say count ifs, word list is the name of the table, length is five, and that gives you 449. Um, how many words start with the below letters? So again, you can do this one with the filter. Uh, so you can just say fi for begins with, because begins with starts with i in some world. Uh, begins with av, hit OK, and then again down the bottom I can see I've got the 31 there. Uh, or I can select them that way and, and count. Uh, so the 31 words starting with av, or you know, let's see, jb was the the example, so we'll just go fi, jb, 
and that gives me 36 words, just like you might expect. Uh, and then, then some of these pattern ones you could do, uh, you know, just with the sort of inherent wildcard in the filter. In other words, like that start with is saying, you know, has A, B at the start and then anything after that. So like something like this one, for example, you could say, well, it's 10 letters long, starts with HA and ends with RQ. You could do that here. So you could say 10. Uh, FI begins with, what did I say, HA, and ends with, oops, sorry, uh, ends with BQ, was it? Nope, ends with RQ, sorry. RQ. And then you can see there's 12 of those. But at that point, you're kind of getting to the extremes of what just the, the filter can handle without wildcards. So in other words, you know, here you won't be able to say, has an A in the second place uh, without using a wildcard. So now let's just talk quickly about wildcards. If you're not familiar with them, there are two text wildcards in Excel. Uh, one is a question mark, uh, and that is the wildcard for any character, and the other is an asterisk or a star or whatever you want to call it, and that is the wildcard for any number of characters, including zero, incidentally. Uh, and so, for example, uh, you know, this pattern here, you would write as question mark, A, question mark, question mark. In other words, it's four letters long. The first letter can be anything. The second letter has to be A. Third letter question mark can be anything. And fourth letter can be anything. Uh, or up here, if you want to say words that start with AV, that would be equivalent to saying words that are this pattern, AV star. And you can also just put that straight into the filter. Uh, you can say filter equals AV star. And that gives you the same result as when you filter for starts with AV. Um, but then obviously you can get into uh, you know, things using the wildcards directly that you can't, uh, can't otherwise. So for example, let's just take, we'll take this one because there's some, we know the answer here is four. So I want equals something A, something, something, and there are my four words, which is exactly what I'm expecting. Um, so the other nice thing about the wildcards is, and actually it gives you a different way to do this as well, even if, without even doing length here, you could just say equals count ifs word list word. How many words match this pattern? Five of any character, and that's your 449 again. Uh, and so then you can use count ifs with these patterns. Word list word is this and anything. So in other words, the word starts with AV and then has any number of characters after that, including zero. And we'll just Put that over there and confirm it matches 36. And the nice thing about this one compared to doing it with the filter is you can copy it down quickly. Uh, and you know, you've got your sort of audit trail effectively of having the formula there. Uh, so then for these ones, we just need to kind of string these together and then replace the underscore, which is a sort of, you know, human readable uh, blank character with a computer readable one. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna say substitute, concat to put them all together. Uh, and then we're going to substitute all underscores with question marks. And that'll give us the pattern. And then we just want to count, count ifs, how many times word list word. Oops, sorry. Uh, that overwrote substitute when I hit tab on the name. But anyway, uh, how many times does uh, this pattern come up? And so the, that gives you the 12 we saw earlier, and you can fill in the other ones. And hopefully when I put it in here, it matches the four that we had before. Good. So now this one uh, is a little trickier. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to say substitute concat. Uh, and I'm going to replace all the underscores with question marks. So here I'm not just looking to say how many are there. I'm looking to say what is the third one. So uh, one option. Just come over here, built it with a wildcard, and then just go one, two, three, and it's this. And you can kind of manually do it that way. Um, you have to make sure these are in alphabetical order first, but uh, spoiler alert, they are, so that's fine. Um, so that's one option, but again, you know, here you've got whatever, one, two, three, four, five, six of them, uh, but 
you know, you'd like to have a more industrial strength version of things in case you had a hundred of them you needed to do, um, or just in case you want to be able to respond quickly when new data comes in. If you've set it up with a formula, then you know you'll be able to update that for new data immediately versus you have the runtime every time new data comes in. So uh, you want to be able to do it with a formula. So a couple of ways to do that. Well, first of all, it's going to help to have uh, that pattern. So I'm going to say substitute concat. Uh, underscore. And by the way, again, in in a sort of you know test situation under time pressure, I would say you know by all means go and uh, go and do you know find replace and replace all underscores with question marks. Um, but if you know if you want the game to be somewhat a parallel of real life, then again you've always got to be thinking you know in the real world you know, next week there's going to be a new report or next month or whatever, there's going to be new data and I'm going to need to apply this again. And so, you know, having your formulas actually deal with the data as it comes rather than, uh, you know, as you would like it to be or as you manually adjust it to be uh, will give you a lot more, uh, a lot more flexibility, make you go a lot faster the next time. So anyway, having said that, uh, one thing we can do is match this against uh, this. Uh, zero for an exact match, and that'll tell me the first match is in row 1177. I'm interested in the third match, so how can I find subsequent matches? Well, one way uh, is I can say match this again, uh, but this time I'm going to look at a shortened range. So I'm going to say index uh, on wordless word, comma, uh, and then this cell here, y54 plus one. So that gives me the, the cell immediately below the first instance of this. And I want to look in the range that starts there. And so it's a little, if you're not familiar with it, this whole index is the equivalent of like one cell. And so I can have that on one side of a colon, just the same as I would say, you know, A1 colon D5. And then on the other side of the colon, I'm going to have the last cell in that range. Uh, and I'll lock it in. Uh, so then uh, let's see, that's my that's my range, and then I want to match that against it with an exact match, so zero. Uh, and then that's going to say 558 cells later I get my next match, so then I want to say plus this. So in, uh, in row 1735 of the table, uh, I should find my second match of this, uh, and then I can, uh, let me just see, do I carry it over exactly? Nope. Uh, I need to lock in this and then I can carry it over. And then my third match should be in uh, row 2160. And if I then come over here, I'll just get a row num. So my, my row numbers are in the table. You know, I don't, I don't need a row num, it's just, it's off by one. But my row numbers are in the table rather than in the grid. So in other words, this is the first row of the table, even though it's row two. But having said that, let's do that filter to match that pattern, and we can see the first one is in row 1178 of the grid, which is 1177 of the table, that's as we expected, then 1736, which is 1735, and 2161, which is 2160. So that's actually working. Uh, and then you can just say equals index word list word this. Uh, and then you can just copy this whole thing down. And that'll give you the third matching word for each one of those. Uh, now, there are reasons to dislike this approach. Um, the number one being, uh, you know, your your three is kind of hard coded. So in other words, if I said, actually, wait, I don't want the third word, I want the seventh word, then you have to come back here and, you know, extend everything. So with this setup, you could never make uh, the number of the word that you want a variable. Um, so that's not ideal. Um, so, I'll show you, first of all, the, the way that I did this three years ago. I went back and found it. Uh, I've got it here. I've graded out so that it wouldn't distract me while I was working. But uh, you can see there's two, two things worth highlighting. One is, uh, you know, it was only three years ago, but the horrors of <laughs> life before the concat formula. Um, I, I might not have been on the latest version then. Maybe, maybe concat was out in the world by then. But anyway. Uh, on whatever version I had at the time, uh, the best way that I could string these 10 characters together was to say click, ampersand, click, ampersand, click, ampersand, click, click, which is, you know, 
painful and also uh, you know very very risky of error and so on. But anyway, so that's how I got the uh, that's how I got the pattern. Let's just uh, turn these back to text color, uh, and then this uh, crazy old school array formula is how I found the third one. So the, the nice thing about this is in in here three is actually a variable, uh, but it's a it's a very um, it's an intense way of doing it. So what are we saying? We're saying index in word list, and I'm using small three. So in other words, I'm figuring out what rows uh, do I have matches for this pattern in, and then I want the third smallest of those. Uh, and I want you to give me the word from there. And then this whole thing with offset is basically just a way of tricking countifs. So normally if you say, you know, countifs uh, word list word, this pattern, then it'll give you, I'll move it down here so you can see them both, it'll give you one answer, which is, you know, that occurs 78 times in there. But what, what you wanted to do is you wanted to basically count if each row. So you wanted to say, you know, it's zero times here and zero times here and one time here and zero times here and one time here and so on down. Um, and so this, this whole crazy offset setup uh, was just like a hack to trick it into doing that. Um, because that's, you know, the world that we lived in back then. So, you know, it's, that one's pretty hairy, um, but it does have the advantage that, you know, three is a variable and you could switch that to look for the fourth or, or whatever number. Um, but it, pretty ugly. Um, the other thing is, you know, in, in the modern, you know, brave new world of dynamic arrays, where you expect to be able to filter things by formula, you would like to be able to not just say, you know, give me the third word, but, you know, if you wanted to use this as an actual crossword solver, then you would want to say, you know, give me all the words that match this pattern. And the challenge with this one is, you could use this to list all the words that match the pattern, but you would be doing all this computation, you know, in other words, a count ifs for every row in every one of your 10,000 rows in each one of these cells. There'd be no kind of saving between them, uh, and that is not ideal. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to, uh, is we're going to filter uh, using the filter formula and a bit of a workaround. So if I want to say filter, uh, you know, this where, uh, I'm sorry, I should probably filter, just go on the data for now, where the length is three. Uh, sorry length equals three, that's better. Uh, then I get, you know, my 55 three-letter words. Uh, but if I want to say filter where uh, the word, if I say, for example, equals uh, question mark, a question mark, question mark, to get the few words I had before, that gives an error. It, it doesn't understand that because that's that's not how equal works. If you use VBA, then there's a, a like function to say, you know, this word is like this pattern, uh, but there's not an equivalent in um, in grid at the moment. So we have to come up with a workaround, and the workaround is in the same spirit as this thing where I said, you know, offset was basically tricking countifs into working one row at a time. Well, in modern Excel, there is a function that's specifically designed to do that, and that function is called by row. Uh, and the idea is you basically take some array and apply a given function to every row in that array uh, and give back the result. So in other words, if I want to say uh, that's my array and then apply some function, obviously that means you have to write a lambda uh, that takes x and returns how many, uh, how many times does x match this pattern, which will obviously just be 0 or 1 because x is just one cell. Uh, and so that gives me a, a by row, and then I can, I'll just for now use the, the sheet filter there. And so you can see that gives me a one next to BAYL, a one next to HAPR, HAVG, and NABN, which are the four words that match that pattern. Uh, but now that I have an array of zeros and ones, I can use that in the filter formula, uh, which is what I will show you how to do now. So that's all. I'll just... Uh, Let's put this value over here for a minute so I can make sure that I'm getting it right. And then I'm going to say filter uh, word list word where by row word list word uh, lambda x countifs 
uh, or x. So in other words, the function that I'm applying to each row is the function that counts how many times the word in that row matches this pattern. And the pattern is the same thing as before, substitute concat. Oops, sorry, concat. Uh, and I'll just include all 10 cells so that it'll work all the way down. Uh, and replace underscores with question marks. Uh, so let me check my bracket closing. So that's the closing substitute, closing countifs, closing lambda, closing by row, closing filter. Uh, and then once I, well, I mean, that'll spill, obviously. So let me just uh, take that over. Well, let me put it over here where I have lots of empty space. Uh, sorry. Got to point that back over here. So then that'll give me everything that matches this pattern here, which was whatever y in the fourth position, r in the seventh position. No, sorry, wrong one. 58. Sorry, here we go. Uh, so any three letters, then two z's. And that you can see that pattern all the way down the middle there. Um, so that's that gives you the filter. Um, and this, you know, this by row is a useful trick to, to remember if you need to be able to do uh, formula filter, but then if I just want the third one, then I can say index that three. And you can see that gives me the same word, and I can copy that down, and it'll keep giving me the same words. So that's all good. Uh, and then we can just quickly check, hopefully. Uh, let's say if I change that to a four, uh, and if I change this to a four, I should get, yes, the same new word there. Okay, so that's that's sort of questions one to four are kind of the uh the the sort of more straightforward um text functions five and six like i said are, are filling in a, a complete grid so there's a little bit of a, a sort of problem solving aspect to this uh, sorry you can see that i've pre-played around with this one uh, so just putting that back so i've got two words in the grid and i want to figure out what pair of words can complete it. And in this case, I'm told there's only one pair of valid words that can be used to complete it. So the key to this one is obviously to realize there's only one letter in common. And so you can think of it as, you know, if I put A in here, then either there's a solution or there isn't. If I put B in here, either there's a solution or there isn't. And, so, you know, if I run through the whole alphabet, either there's a solution or there isn't. Because I'm told there's only one solution, then it must be that only one of those letters has a match for both this word and this word. Uh, and so a few ways that you can do that, but so I'm just going to uh, basically change that underscore to a different symbol here so that I can get a pattern here. So I'm going to say substitute concat, same as I keep doing uh, here, with my underscores replaced with question marks. And then I'll do the same thing for this pattern uh, here. And so now I'm basically interested in matching both of these two patterns against the word list where the equal is some letter at the same time. Um, and so to do this, it's going to be helpful to have a uh, just copy these down here. It's going to be helpful to have a list of the letters. And so one way that we can do that is uh, we can first do sequence. Uh, actually, sorry, I'll just start with the car. Um, so we, we want to list car uh, gives you the character corresponding to an ASCII code. So in other words, if you say code of A, the capital letter A is 65. So I want the 26 letters starting from 65. So I'm going to say car of sequence, comma, uh, so no, no rows, I want it to be across the column, 65, uh, sorry, 26 columns for 26 letters starting at 65. And the characters of that gives you A to Z or Z. I always get very self-conscious when, uh, when I say Z or Z, knowing that it's going to be watched by both my Irish friends who think I'm ridiculous for saying Z and my American friends who think I'm weirdly parochial for saying Z. But anyway, <laughs> so then I can just say count ifs, uh, word list, word uh, where the pattern I'm looking for is this. Uh, actually, I don't even need to lock that because I'm going to use an array formula. Uh, replacing the equal sign with this. Uh, and I'll first lock the row and then make it an array. And so that tells me, you know, if I put in an A at the intersection, there are no matches for the vertical word. B, no matches. C, D, D, E. Uh, e, there are three matches, G, there are two matches, and so on across. Uh, and then I can just copy that down. Um, and yeah, I don't need to change anything else about that. So then I can say match both. 
uh, I'll just say this times this. Uh, actually, they're both arrays, so I can just do that rather than copying across. And sure enough, uh, let me just uh, oops, scroll up so you can see the little summary stat at the bottom. The sum is one, so there's only one uh, place where they both match. Uh, and if I look back here, I can see, okay, so the place where they both match is the letter V. Uh, and so now I can say uh, the blue word is going to be, uh, well, I'll X look up, I sometimes V look up, but you know, just to, to not anger the haters today. Uh, so I'm going to take this pattern, so I'm going to substitute in here, replace the equals with a V. Uh, and then I'm going to X look up that in word list word returning from word list word and match mode has to be wildcard so in, in vlookup uh, and in match the wildcards were used by default but uh, in xlookup and xmatch they are not used by default so you just have to be a little careful for that so there is a word and you know because of the way we've done this we know it's the only word uh, that matches the pattern when there's a, a v there uh, and then we just do that and then and put down here. And that gives me the same thing for matching the second word. So the only words I can put in here are blue vag and blue yik. Uh, and then question six, how many different pairs of words can be used to complete the grid below? Uh, so, you know, similar similar style, similar approach. I'm just going to change that to an equal sign and then most of the rest of the workings carry over. Uh, so let's just take this and I'm going to put that in two, three, three away from there. It's the same pattern, so one, two, three. So now I've got that, I've got that, that all works. That, oops, sorry, uh, that will go away, help. Uh, okay, and then I just want to sum up. So in other words, here for example, there, there are 16 uh, matches on the vertical word uh, with an A at the intersection, and there are 11 matching words on the horizontal position. So in other words, in total, there are 176 ways that you can fill in this grid if this is an A. And then you just need to sum that over all the letters, and the total number of ways to fill in the grid is, oops, is 1555. Okay, so now, uh, find a word that is an anagram of each of these. In other words, you can rearrange the letters uh, in, in any order you want to match something that's on the list. Um, I've, I've come to love, funnily enough, at the time I wrote this uh, question, I didn't really do a lot of crosswords, um, but during lockdown I became totally addicted to them, uh, and I still do the New York Times crossword almost every day. Um, but anagrams, definitely not one of my strong suits, uh, and luckily they don't feature that much in, uh, in the New York Times crossword. But <laughs> Uh, they're you know a nice little uh, nice little Excel problem. So the way that I originally tackled this when I when I did this problem three years ago was basically I I uh, you know added 26 more um, columns to this table to say you know in each word how many A's how many B's how many C's how many D's da da da, da. and then you know optionally converted that into a string which was you know basically the whole thing in alphabetical order so you know all the a's followed by all the b's followed by all the c's etc etc um and then you know kind of hard coded uh, that into the table here and then did the same conversion to each of these and then you can just say okay well once you have the letters in alphabetical order all the anagrams just match each other uh, and so you, know, you just had to do a lookup uh, to find a matching word uh, and the last question asked which word has the most anagrams of itself in the dictionary, which again, once you have kind of reordered every word is, is quite straightforward to do. Um, but in, you know, the brave new world of dynamic arrays, who wants to have 26 columns of, of helper cells? Uh, and sure enough, this is a problem that, uh, that is quite well suited to, uh, to being solved with a lambda. So I'm going to show you how to write a lambda to do that. Uh, I'm, and I'm going to do it in the advanced formula environment because uh, that's because it's cool. That's why. Uh, no, no better reason needed than that. Uh, and I'm going to move my... Whoops, that's the wrong piece of thing to move. I'm going to move me. There we go. That's me. I'm going to move me over to the other side. Uh, while I play around here, and hopefully I'll remember to put myself back this time. Uh, and let me just shrink up the formula bar so that we can have as much space for this as we want. So I'm going to add a new formula, a uh, new lambda. I'm going to call it d-anagram. 
anagram. Uh, we make this big. I uh, might even make it a little bigger than this. There we go. And so, what am I going to say? Uh, well, it's going to be a lambda, obviously. Uh, and so, let's think through what we're going to need. I'm going to want to take uh, a word as my input. I'm going to want to take. Uh, I'm, I'm going, to, going to want to build up an output by putting together, you know, all the A's and then all the B's and then all the C's and so on. Uh, and I'm going to want to have a list of characters to run through. So those are going to be my three arguments. So the three arguments will be, uh, I'll call it start string, start str, uh, end str, end string, uh, and then car list. Uh, so you can think of this as start string will start off as the input word, end string will start off as empty, uh, and the character list will start off as A to Z or Z. Um, and then these will gradually shift. So in other words, you know, first I'll move all the A's out of here into here and then take that off character list. Then I'll move all the B's from here to here and take that off character list. Then I'll move all the C's and so on uh, until I've done all the letters and then I'll dump out my end string. So what's that going to look like? Well, I'm going to say uh, if, uh, oh, I don't like the way that goes over there. Oh, and I can't move it like with the other one. Hmm, interesting. I just downloaded the advanced uh, formula environment today, so I'm just still getting the hang of that. Anyway, so I'm going to say if, uh, sorry, len, car, actually, no, I don't even need len, because I'm saying if it's empty, if there are no characters left. If car list equals that, then the output should be end string. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to need to call myself. Um, but I'm going to start with a let, because I'm going to need to work through a few steps before I'm ready to call myself. So first thing I'm going to let is I'm going to say substring. I'm going to take the start string. Uh, sorry, I'm going to substitute in the, st in the start string. Uh, I'm going to replace all instances of the first character in the car list uh, with blanks. Okay, so I said at, at each step I'm going to remove one character. So that's the first thing. So now I've got my substring, meaning my start string with one character substituted out of it. Uh, then I need to know how many times. So I'm going to how many times did that come up? So the number of characters is just going to be the length of start string minus the length of substring. So in other words, how many characters shorter did it get when I did that? That's the number of times that, so in other words, if I start with A, first I take all the A's out of start string, and that's substring. Then I figure out how much shorter did that get. That's how many A's I have. And then I'm ready to call myself. So I'm going to call D anagram. Uh, and what are my arguments? Well, instead of start string, I've now got substring. So the string where I've taken out one uh, one letter. Instead of end string, I've got the original end string and uh, num cars of that character. And so to repeat a character a certain number of times, you can use repeat. Uh, and the text I'm going to repeat is left of car list. So the uh, second argument to left uh, is optional. So if you leave it blank, it'll just take one character. So the left of that and how many times I'm going to repeat it, num cars. I already worked that number out. Uh, so that's my repeat. And then my character list is going to be, I just basically want to drop the first character from character list. So the way I can do that is, actually, let's do write. Uh, write of car list len of car list minus one. And then it's, hopefully it's already closed all my uh, brackets for me by itself. It's underlining all this in squiggly red, which suggests I've got something wrong. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Oops. Sorry. So tick. Uh, and then I'm just going to hit sync to bring it back into the workbook. And I'll close that. So now I can open up here and I can see I've got D anagram there. And it's this whole big crazy thing. Uh, that's fine. So now I just need to have my character list, uh, my alphabet in order. And I've already got the alphabet listed out here, so I'll just hit concat on that. Uh, and then I'm going to say, I'll put it over here because it's not actually the answer. I'm going to say D anagram this, starting with an end string of nothing and with a character list of this. 
Let's see if that works. It does. That's pretty cool. Uh, so then I want to deanagram all of these. So I'm going to say deanagram this, starting with an end string that's empty and with a character list of this. And now we'll see if my code is efficient because does it want to do it a thousand times quickly? Oh, and now I'm going to move my face back across because I did remember that this time, just about. Uh, and sure enough, that seems to have run uh, on 10,000 rows without any great difficulty. Um, one thing you'll notice, I'll just uh, shrink up this so you can see it here, is uh, because this is um, because this is a recursive lambda, it's kind of the equivalent to having iterative calculations turned on. It means that this calculate will never completely go away. Um, so you, even if I hit F9 and everything is, is kind of stable, you'll always have that calculate thing there. So that's just... It is what it is, uh, just something to be aware of. It doesn't mean that it hasn't recalculated, uh, but it does mean that it's perhaps a little hard to tell if it has recalculated. Anyway, so now I've got my de-anagrammed anagrammed version, uh, and then, you know, once I've got that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just going to say equals xlookup. That thing that I just cut from over there, which is de-anagramming this uh, in word list deanagrammed, returning from word list word. Uh, and everything else is fine. And so now ARHZVP. Oh, didn't like that. Hmm. Why not? Oh, sorry. Because I didn't lock this here, which I should have because we're referencing that everywhere. So just do that. Try again. ARHZVP. Cool. Uh, so then we can just fill that down, and you can see it's a little, just a, like a hair slower on, on recalculating that compared to uh, compared to a normal function, but not much. Um, and so there's my answers there, and then the final question, pre-bonus, uh, which word has the most anagrams of itself in the dictionary? Lots of different ways you could do this, but I'm just going to uh, do a very, very quick pivot table. Put de-anagrammed there, put word there and whoops, uh, and then sort descending, and here we go. This word here has nine anagrams, uh, and so I'm going to open up Word, put that in alphabetical order. So the question was, find the first uh, word in alphabetical order of those uh, of the word that has the most anagrams, and so that answer right there is it. Uh, so I'm just going to drop it in there. So that's the end of this. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I've got uh, the I'll give you a little bit of backstory to it, but basically there were three bonus questions uh, in this question which appeared with, no joke, this big red banner warning uh, saying these questions are intended to be much harder slash more time consuming than the other questions in this section and do not carry high marks. So basically the, the background to this was, you know, the last few years of model off, what had originally been a two-hour test became a three-hour test with, you know, some small amount of bonus marks for finishing quickly. I think this year we didn't even have bonus marks for finishing quickly, but the idea was, well, if someone is doing really well, then they might actually get all the questions finished in two and a half hours rather than three hours, and we want something to differentiate them for that. And so we had these three uh you know, two two quite difficult and one very difficult bonus questions. Um that people had the option to tackle in the extra time. And so I think, you know, questions one to eight here were worth something like 30 marks, and all the three bonus questions put together were worth five. So there was a clear warning that you shouldn't even try it unless you've done everything else first. And as it happens, uh, only one person even attempted the last bonus question and got it wrong, unfortunately. Um, he told me afterwards there were like 500 different words to test, and he had been able to test two of them, uh, and then he guessed at random among the other uh, 497 or whatever it was. Um, so a noble effort, but yeah, that was a hard question. So I'm, I'll quickly show you these now, and I'll, I'll make another video at some later point um, to to show how to do them. Um, and by, sorry, I should have said this at the start, but this whole workbook, um, you know, for once I'm actually working with my own IP, so I am going to uh, put a link down below the video uh, where you can download this if you want to either try these, you know, these first eight or give the bonus questions a try. Uh, the I'm hoping that my solution video for the bonus questions will be out in a couple of days, so if you want to give them a go before the answers are out in the world, uh, you know, go for it. Um, so, three three bonus questions. The first one is, rather than a kind of one-word anagram, you've got a three-word anagram. So this is an anagram of a three-word expression with a six-letter word, a three-letter word, and a seven-letter word. Uh, there's only one match, uh, and you have to find it. 
Question 10 is like a harder version of the unique match question up above. So if, I don't know why, oh yeah, I fixed the numbering in the end. So if three across is an anagram of this, uh, so you can solve the anagram the way you solved anagrams before, then there's only one possible word that can go in five across to allow you to complete the grid. And the question was, what word can go in five across to complete the grid? So first you have to de-anagram this to find the word that goes in here, and then you have to figure out of all the things that could cross that and the things that, that could then cross those, there's only one possible word here, and what is it? So those two are are pretty difficult. Uh, and then the last one is in, in a different level. Um, doable but in a different league uh, and so the question is the choice of word in three across meant that there was only one possible answer in five across there is another word you could have put in three across that would have had the same property in other words where there would have been a unique answer here so you can imagine there's lots of words you could put here where there might be 30 possible words here or 100 possible words here there might even be a word you could put here where there's no possible way to complete the rest of the grid after that but there are only two words that you could put here that have exactly one matching word down here. Uh, so this is an anagram of one of them, and the question was to find the other word that you could put in there that would have only one uh, matching answer. So if anybody wants to give that a go, like I said, the, the link to the workbook will, uh, will be down below. I would love to see somebody come and tell me the answer to that question. The, the one other little piece of backstory to this one is, um, you know, the, obviously we had a whole sort of question checking process among the question design team. Uh, we almost didn't run this question because each of the other members of the question design team tried the question and said, hey, I've gone through it. I agreed with your answers, you know, other thoughts, comments, etc., etc. I didn't try the last question. Um, and so at some point I said, guys, you know, I, I don't think we can run this question unless somebody other than me has confirmed that this is the correct answer. So, you know, either somebody do it or we have to pull it out. Um, and faced with the prospect of having to remove it otherwise, somebody did then go and check it and confirm that I had got the uh, that I had got the answer right and so we left it in. But that's that's the level of you know intimidation factor. So uh, you know the gauntlet has been thrown down. I'd love to see somebody uh, love to see somebody get it before I put out the solution video. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.